So we look at some of the extraction tools for extracting points. Um, we'll look at some of the line extraction tools now. So I'm just going to turn off, I'll turn off the vegetation. I'll just leave the others on. Just the trees can be a little bit extracting, uh, distracting. And we'll just, uh, maybe just to enable just the ground. And we'll actually look at the dividers. So here I'm just going to use a very simple extraction technique for extracting the fence here. And very typical approach for taking for the, the fence. So we're just going to go into CAD and I'm going to choose to create a point. And I'm going to start with the point ID, start point number 100, this first one that we've actually done. I'm going to choose the feature codes. I'll turn off this and start with the fence in the corner. And I can just select the point on the fence. And what I can do here is you'll notice that it allows me to select the height manually. And this is so useful because generally we want the fence down at ground level. So we can select the fence up high where we can see it clearly. And then we can select the point down at ground level. And then we can basically just carry on. And we can do exactly the same here and say, yep, this is where we want the fence extracted. This point here, ground at ground level. And then the last point in the fence is this point at the edge here. But that's down at the ground level here. And then if I just hit that option, we've extracted our fence. And we can carry on, update our feature code, and we can carry on extracting the fence on the other side. So we can just choose, OK, that's the first point. That's the ground point. That's that point here. That's that point here. And once again, if I just turn off the ground, you can see that we're just extracting that fence line using that sort of two step method. And we can carry on and extract all the buildings and the fences in the same way. Very similar approach for extracting the buildings. A lot of the time you're selecting a point clearly up high in the building so you get the clarity of the point. And then we're selecting a point on the ground where we want the ground level. If we're looking at extracting things like curbs, there's a few different approaches that we can take. So first of all, if I just move into this location here, this tool is very, very good for um, sort of more open roads where you're not getting lots of changes of shape. So we go to point clouds and we choose extract line feature. And we choose curb and gutter. And then we just choose a cutting plane one on the top of the curb and one on the road side of the curb. And we can see that we see this slice through the, the curb. And what I can do is basically just add the nodes where I actually want the various points to be extracted from. So I'm just going to, what I'm looking for is that general shape as we extract. And then we can say, okay, I want to extract the point every two meters. I want a 90% confidence between each step and then I just choose extract. And this tool can batter along big road sections very, very quickly. Um, you can see here it stopped after a few because we've got this change of shape on the grass. And I can just update that and continue and just let it carry on extracting. Or what I probably should have done is bring the node in a little bit closer. And you can see that it's extracting the curbs all the way through. We do have a few. So we've got a drop curb here. So you've got a couple of options. If we're only actually a channel line that we're interested in, what we can do is we can just say select next node point. And we can say the node point that we want to actually update is node number three. And if we're not interested in modeling this top of channel change, then I can just say, look, forget about it. Just move on to there and just extract. And then we can do exactly the same for the next location. And we can say extract and it will jump on. And then we can basically say, and here the shape has changed a little bit. So it's basically starting to say, okay, this you're going to need to help me out here. So we're just going to update that location there. So let's edit the template nodes again. And we can just do here and here. 
and extract. And this, going around this corner here, again, we've got a drop curb. And again, this is where we're going to have to help it through. So the first thing I would do is just undo it. Um, this works extremely well on open roads, nice regular curbs. It's an extremely good tool for extracting curbs. Um, and you get the curb and the top of curb. Um, another tool I'll just show you. I'll show you in a different section, so I won't bother saving that. I'll show you a different section, and it's not by using the extract line feature. We're going to basically do it as a traditionally coded point. So we're going to go to CAD, we're going to create point, and we're going to choose to choose the option. Um, we're going to choose the option to code it as a curve. And this time we are going to use the smart picking mode, which is gutter. Now, the reason I like this particular one is for this sort of situation, which I'll show you. On this curb here, there's an awful lot of vegetation growing in it. And the curb extraction tool can just get a little bit confused by it. And here, what we do is we get the sweep through the curb. We're looking for the minimum point, And then we can just validate. And we're just choosing accept. And again, we're just doing this sweep. And what we're looking for really is the heights down here and the face of the curb. And once again, this is the top of the curb. So what we're really doing is trying to get in here past that vegetation that's getting in the way. And you can see here, when I look at it, yeah, that's that's where I want to be. I want to get past that. There's a lot of moss growing in that, in that uh, or grass growing in that channel. When I select here, much cleaner, and we can just get down into the corner of the curb and we can digitize all of that very quickly. Again, here we've got quite a lot of vegetation. We might just decide to cancel that location and look somewhere else and get it here instead, which looks more likely. And again, when we verify that, that's looking a much better channel position for that curve. But there's a lot of vegetation in there. So that's a very handy tool for these applications. We can also choose variation of it, which is face a curb. So if I just change my feature code to top of curb, and we just go across to, and we're selecting, and we're just verifying. This is much easier for the system to catch out, figure out what the top of the curve is. And we're just looking for that level on the top of the curve. And we're digitizing this in a very quick way. Again, we can just close that, tick the red dot. And there's our feature coding. And if we turn off our point clouds, there's our feature coded line work being extracted for that location. So that's a very good tool where um, you've got vegetation in your channel lines, then it seems to work very well.